let's talk about the housing market. And so yes, sir. before we jump in, for everybody watching this in the live mastermind group, here's my recommendation. The same way that I grab Steve every week and do a housing market update for the country, my recommendation would be that you would grab your loan officer locally and do something very similar that you guys do a live stream once a week and you do a housing market update. There is no better way to position yourself as an expert to report what is happening in the local housing market. So that's just a recommendation. I've got a slide deck that will show you guys. We'll go through the numbers. And if you guys want that slide deck as a template, I'd be happy to share it with you guys. But before we get into the numbers, Steve, while we have you, I know you've got a closing. Walk us through... Yeah, this week, what happened with with uh, mortgage interest rates? What happened with the economy? And what were the biggest things that impacted the the market this week? So yeah, it was you know really from like a, an economic perspective here in the United States and like our whole economic situation, right? In, inflation rates and all these different things that we're dealing with and talking about all the time was a really quiet week. And yeah. when you have really quiet weeks, unfortunately, that's that's worse than a really active week because it's 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 emotion, right? So it's just bond traders and, and trader and investors and all kinds of things that are just speculating on what could be and all the talking heads start talking and all the Fed governors start talking and there's just there's a lot of it's just very it's like a hot topic, right? And so this week was, and we'll get into it, was a lot of housing data, believe it or not. So a lot of things about uh, home sales, home prices, um, the data that really moved our markets for interest rates. So it's we've continued on this roller coaster, right? Like so, we talked about that was as spring and summer have rolled around, we're getting a lot of inf data for inflation showing data, inflation is continuing to come down. It's still sticky. Um, but it's continuing to come down. I think we're we're running just below five percent right now, and the Federal Reserve wants to see it at two percent. And so, what and what they're worried about there is managing the job loss with that, and unemployment, and growing the labor market, but not too much, and generating the soft landing. And so, this week, um, we saw so we saw the debt deal get signed, and that was totally ratified. Biden signed off on that, which. It does spook the bond market a little bit because as the treasury is going to raise their debt ceiling, it means they're going to issue more debt. So how do they do that? They introduce more bonds to the market, which again, there's way more supply, which means in order to get more people to buy them, you have to provide a higher rate of return. So we saw bond prices tick up some to initially start absorbing this new supply of bonds. And that eventually started to peter itself out and that will get absorbed into the market as a normal thing. Um, Tuesday, we saw the, uh, Canada, I can't remember if it was Tuesday or Wednesday, I think it was Tuesday, uh, Canada raised their interest rate unexpectedly. Um, so they, their Canada's Federal Reserve raised their rate and that was, uh, that didn't help us at all. Uh, so we had a rough day Wednesday. Then yesterday we got initial unemployment claims and that came in much higher than anticipated. So, you know, we, we keep talking about it as the Fed is raising rates. The reason they're doing that and the way they get that to stifle inflation is to slow down employment and employers paying people, big companies spending money and putting money into the economy. And the problem is there, it's not it hasn't been helping. They're still hiring people. They're still innovating and there's still money in the markets to support these companies doing that. And so um, it, was, it was kind of a welcome site yesterday. We got a lot back uh, as far as rates go. So we went from really riding in the sevens almost um, yeah. to getting back yesterday into like some of that six and three quarters range. And then today it's it's up and down. Like we lost 50 basis points. Now we're down 15 basis points, you know? So it's just, it's just a ton of speculation, which is really hard for these traders to manage. And as you know, for people out there buying homes, it's like, you know, they talk to me one day and they're like, cool, we're six and three quarters. Like we found a house, let's lock. I'm like, cool, it's seven today, you know? And they're yeah. just like, how does that even happen? So. It, it, it's an interesting ride, and from an economic perspective, there's not, there's not like a, there's not like a hill we can plant our flag on. Like this drove the markets. Now next week, that's a whole different story, and all the speculation about what's going to happen next week is what's driving the markets this week. And as you and I both know, speculation is always worse than the facts, right? Always, always. And yeah, to your point, I mean, next week's a big week. The Fed meets on the 14th, and the thing that everybody is of course, waiting to see is what are they going to do? Are they going to lower rates? Are they going to pause? Are they going to increase? And I saw an interesting report that actually came out today 
And they are saying that there's a 77% chance that they don't hike, that they actually pause for the first time in quite a while. So yeah, next week will be a big week. It'll really, I can't wait to see how the bond market responds to that news. Because the linchpin in this entire marketplace, as we've talked about week over week over week, is mortgage interest rates. As soon as the buyer, as soon as the seller can see a dip in these mortgage rates where they can get some relief because they have perspective, because they've been hovering around 65 to 7% for so long, if we can get back into the fives this summer, I think this, this housing market will do great things. I think a lot of people will will get off the sideline, they'll start to move. And there is a pent up demand. And we just need that linchpin of interest rates to pull. And I think things will get back into motion. All right, real quick, and then we'll get right back to the content. If you're a real estate agent, you're looking to build a listing based business, a business where you can generate a multiple six figure income, a business that doesn't require you to waste thousands of dollars on the new marketing gimmicks, then I'm going to invite you to click the link right underneath this video to learn about our listing agent academy coaching program. This is a six month intense coaching system that more than three thousand agents from every market all over the country have now gone through. And here's the reality. Here's the truth. I will shoot you straight. This program is not for everyone. This is for agents who value being around winners. They value being in a community of other real estate agents that actually show up, that actually put forth the work. And this is for agents that embrace high levels of accountability and visibility. To get the details, all you have to do is click the link beneath this video. You can schedule a coaching consultation and then you can decide for yourself. So with that being said, let's jump back into the content. I, I think so too. Um, you know, there's there's a lot of, like we could, you know, I was thinking about it to myself, you know, I'm like, oh, we could speculate on on pause and raising and what they might do in the July meeting. And it's interesting, I had a client that was talking to me about the same thing yesterday. You know, we were going over numbers and payments and uh, he's like, you know, maybe I just rent for the next year. You right. know, he's like my rent, his rent's going from 1800 a month, to like 2400 bucks a month to sign another 12 months or to do month to month. And he goes, I can do 2200 a month if I go to a 12 month lease, something like that. I'm like, you know, I was like, here's, I was like, I'm never like, you have to do whatever feels right to you, right? Isn't that how, we're, I mean, people are only gonna believe and feel comfortable with what they believe. So they have to make this decision on their own. It's so the information you provide them is like, look, you know, there are a lot of people that feel the same way you do that are in month to month leases right now that as soon as they see rates come down, even though they might only come down a quarter to half of a percent. But once they see in the news like a meaningful drop in rates where the news brings up, hey, inflation, they pause raising rates. They've done this. The bond market's easing. Well, all of a sudden, as soon as more people get off that fence, it's they aren't magically going to build a bunch of homes as fast as rates are going to go down. So right. you're still going to have that same supply issue with a whole lot more buyers ready to rock and roll that have been on the sidelines and said, okay, I tried to do this a year ago and I had to come up with a $50,000 appraisal guarantee. Well, look, Terry Ann, we were going to save every dime we have for the next 12 months to get that appraisal guarantee, you know, or to pay right. these closing costs because now they know what it's going to take. Now they're coming into this market with the expectation to pay higher numbers where you, you have an opportunity now while that guy's still sitting over there with Terry Ann saving their money. You know, so funny. I mean, I think the best the, the thing that I thought about, and I don't know if this lands or if this makes sense to anybody or not. But to me, this is kind of the way I see this housing market. You know, I, I think that perspective is is super, it's a super valuable thing to have. And so the way I think about this is so we've got this community uh, pool where we live. And when it when the weather is shitty, You've got like nobody at the pool, right? I mean, no one's yeah. sitting by the pool. I'm going to try to pull off one of these Steve Frost analogies. So the pool is going to be tough. So the pool's <laughs> empty, right? Then you have what someone would call a nice day. And before I go on with the story, in order to call something a nice day, they have to have something to, comp to compare to. So you can't have one without the other. So contrast or that comparison or perspective is very, very important. So if on a rainy day, on a cold day, the pool scene is just dead, right? Nobody's there. 
Then the sun comes out and it's 78, 82 degrees. And that thing is packed house. I look at the housing Top. market. What's that? It's hopping. It's hopping. It's, it's hopping. Today. So I, I kind of look at, so, so when we talk about perspective, when I keep saying that, what I mean by that is you have all these people that are living, that are staying inside right now because the, the mortgage interest rates are so high. That's their rainy day. They're not going to the pool. But as soon as those things come down, to your point, if we start touching five and three quarters, five, it doesn't even matter. High fives. If it, there's a five in front of a rate, that's like the sun coming out and the pool scene will be popping again. That's the way if I look at the housing market. Part of that rate and somehow it ends up on CNBC. Get your DocuSign ready, you know? Yeah, you're writing offers left and right. People are going to be blowing you up and, you know, wanting to do something. And, and I still, I still believe that that will be the case coming into this summer, late summer. We just have to get some traction. We've come, we're coming out of a lot of turmoil. Um, I don't know what your thoughts are, and we'll get into the numbers here in just a second. But how do you see it happening this summer? Do you think that we can break back into the fives? And if so, do you think this housing market gets back into motion this summer? Yeah, I do. I think I think it'll be later in the summer than than a lot of us planned on. I think that um, you know the way the way the labor market is really still very strong i think at the end of the day is is how we might actually pull off a soft landing to all these rate hikes without this massive recession which you know the recession a recession is great like a recession is already happening the economic activity is receding and gross domestic product is receding so that is happening the other part of the recession is the fallout the job losses the stock markets the retirement accounts like all these things that come along with recessions that lose money or lose opportunity or is a hardship for families is i think that somehow some way this fed might actually pull that off and you have to think we've had a lot of recessions we've got a lot of new technology and we've got a lot of money in the markets like if you look at like 25 percent of the wealthiest advisor or the top advisors that are holding the largest percentage of the money, like 25% of that money is in cash right now. Right. So all the wealthy people got smart and they started pulling back out. Well, there's a ton of cash on the sidelines that they can throw into these companies as they, as they see economic activity changing and they can be very nimble, which is what we didn't do in the past. So I, I think that, I, I think that we will see rates come. Down. I think it'll take a little bit longer than we thought, but the fed is they are like, bound and determined to get inflation to two percent like they are going to get there one way or another but it's starting to look a lot like with what the markets are doing in the labor markets like it may be a softer landing than what we thought and if it's a softer landing than we thought i think it's going to take longer to see the impact on rates right away yeah that makes sense that makes sense well let's get into the numbers steve and again, for everybody that's watching this in the live audience in our mastermind, we'll get you guys a, a copy of this slide deck so that you can edit it for your local market and then you guys can use it for your own weekly housing market updates, which again, is something I think every real estate agent should be doing. If I could go back and start my real estate career all over again, it would be one of the first things I would do, Steve. I would, I would partner up with you and I would say, listen, we have to get on social media and we have to broadcast the local housing market news because it's free. And could you imagine one day if social media was no longer free, how much people would regret not building an audience? Anyway, I digress, but every real estate agent should be doing this every single week. Because if you ask an agent 10 years ago, 20 years ago, hey, uh, if we could put you on the news every day for free, how many of them would have done it? Everybody, everybody would have wanted to do it. Well, we have that opportunity now and it's rare that people do it. So that's my little okay. plug. Go ahead. You want to add something to that? Do yeah. you want to know like a prime example of that is did you see, and I'm not being political at all, so don't take it that way, but with Twitter and the viewer, how many viewers watch Tucker Carlson on Twitter than they did on Fox News or, again, Insane. this is all very political, right? So it can be, construed as what I'm just saying, just from like the viewership numbers and the way people are consuming news and consuming information and entertainment these days is are free are these free platforms, which is it's crazy. a great point. 
It's not, it's not political at all. No, I think, I think you're, you're spot on. It's a really, really good point that cable TV, the numbers are just decimated. The amount of people watching cable news is just dead. And to your point yeah. there, people are getting way more viewership on social media than any prime time spot on any media outlet. And so again, I cannot stress it's this so enough easy to do it right here. Exactly. So much easier. Even to get on like a Hulu to see a real news broadcast is so much harder than oh. popping on a Twitter or an Instagram or Facebook where you can curate exactly what you see every day. You know, it's I know. Just, so you're right. Sorry. I, I just think started. most most real estate agents and most loan officers will look back and they will regret not getting uncomfortable, not getting behind the camera because I don't feel comfortable. I, I understand. But the power of doing what we're doing, and for a real estate agent in a local market, sitting there in Tampa, Florida, or Dallas, Texas, or wherever, you can get all these eyeballs. You can get all the attention. You can get all the brand recognition you want if you will just hit record. So anyway, I digress. Let's jump into the numbers. So every week, Steve and I will continue to bring you the housing market update week by week. And then once we have monthly data, we'll do the same thing for, for the monthly data. So when we look at sales prices, to your point, right? We're getting a lot of uh, home sales information. And home prices are still way up historically. But this time last week, we see a small dip from where we were this time last week or last year in this week. And that's obviously because we're coming out of a market that was a statistical crazy anomaly, right? Mortgage interest rates were way, way down. And so this is not surprising. Now, when we look at the number of new listings, this is the thing that is keeping housing prices from really falling. And this week, we had only 55,000 new properties come into the marketplace, Steve. If you look at this, from this same time last year, we had 71,000 properties hit the market and only 55,000. Again, this is due to the sellers that you and I are talking about that are just on the sideline. They're just waiting to see what happens with mortgage rates. I Myself, I have such a pent up pipeline of people that want to list their house like so badly. They just can't stomach going from three and a quarter to 7%. But they can stomach five and a quarter, five and a half, five and three quarters. And so new listings are getting crushed. And you tell me this all the time. I mean, how many pre-approvals do you have out there walking around at any given time, would you say? The most I've ever had. So I probably have 60 wow. pre-approvals right now for probably, yeah. I mean, deep in the, I mean, $20 million. Yeah. And the thing is, as you're talking to your clients, it's the same old story. We, there's just nothing for sale. That's what you keep hearing week over week over week, correct? Yeah. And, and that's what you're hearing from the well, realtors that you partner that, with. You know? What's that? Phone call. I mean, I have agents going back to making offers in person, writing letters, doing pictures of their family. I mean, it's crazy. It is crazy. doing everything we can right now anyway. Well, and here's here's the manifestation of the lack of new listings. Here's Here's active listings. All right, so see, this is important because we, we're not taking pendings into consideration. This is active yeah. for sale properties. This is what's available for the U.S. population to go out there and purchase a home. Although it's up from last year, which is historical lows, there's only 436,000 homes for sale. To put this into context... I added this on the slide because context matters. We talked about perspective and the ability to compare. In 2015, over a million properties were for sale. And we have less than half of that right now. So this is our blessing and our curse. It's the blessing because this right here is keeping home prices at bay. This is the reason why home prices aren't plummeting. However, it's also destroying home sales transactions, opportunities for realtors and loan officers. And then you look at our month's worth of supply. Month's worth of supply tells us, are we in a seller's market? Are we in a buyer's market? Ladies and gentlemen, we are still in a seller's market. Even though there are pockets 
of different markets across the country that have slowed down, we're still across the board just over two and a half months worth of inventory. At the lowest point, we were at 2.1 months worth of inventory this time last year, which indicates that we are very much so in a seller's market. Days on market is up. We're at 20, 28 days on market. This is coming from last year this time, Steve, which was the record low. Ironically enough, this, this week last year, we saw the lowest days on market, which is the beginning of home buying season. It was 18. And so we're still under 30 days on the market. Now, this is interesting. And I think that you're still seeing a lot of this when you're writing offers with your, with your buyers and your agents that you partner with. Certainly we are. This is showing how many homes in the marketplace, Steve, are selling above the asking price. And still over a third of the property, 35% of every house that is sold in this country is still selling for more than the seller bargained for. To me, that's just a that's just a crazy stat because it shows demand. It shows that the market is still very strong from a seller's perspective. Yeah, we're down from 54% in 2022. But when you have a third of the inventory selling for more than what the sellers wanted, it's a crazy stat. You have any thoughts on that? Yeah, I do. And you know, to me, it seems low. Oh, so yeah, because, I think yeah, that, yeah. I think that more are selling at a hundred percent or or above. You know that thirty five percent. I don't know exactly what the parameters are that make up that number. If there's like some wholesaling, and I know like on the wet on the extreme on the extreme ends, like low and high, there's probably a lot of fluctuation in in price negotiation. Like I think in that fifty million dollar range, they probably have more negotiating than the 350 but like i think for most of the main street agents that you're going to talk to right now or consumers are going to would that number would be a lot higher just to, just in my just i just looking at my business you know absolutely no no you yeah it's funny because yeah you look at data but then there's a story behind the numbers and when your boots on the on the ground you're probably right which we're going to talk about that in a second so price reductions they're they're up slightly, but still very low. I mean, ninety five percent of the properties are selling without a price reduction, and this is what you're talking about right here. List to sold price ratio. This is average across the board. That almost every seller is getting what they want. That's the that's the number. This is what I look at when I go and meet with the seller, Steve. This is the expectation. This is what a seller should expect. This is average. Now, yeah, last year. The average was more than sellers wanted, but we're still there or thereabouts. That's a famous F1 saying, there or thereabouts. And sellers are getting what they're bargaining for. Mortgage interest rates, this is your wheelhouse. We're coming off of a brutal week last week. This week, we saw some relief. So we're coming off of that 7% market. The average 30-year rate mortgage this week was hovering around 6.8%. Just give us a quick update as of Friday, as we end the week, where are they hovering right now, Steve? Right about there. Yeah, yeah. So that that's gonna come at, I mean, that's not even like a par rate. That would be, that'd be your rate with like a point or a little over a point. Yeah, yeah. And this was the average, the average yeah. We'll see what happens next week. And then yeah, purchase, what's that? So it should be interesting for sure. Yeah, and, and there's no surprise that mortgage applications were down this week just a little bit two percent and that's just a result of simply mortgage this interest rates. Loan officer slide. like if you know a loan officer out there give them a big hug so with that two percent decline in purchase mortgage applications we hit a 24 year low in mortgage applications so if there's people out there if there's loan officers that see this like we're here with you <laughs> this is like, the, I keep telling people that work for me, you know, I'm like, you know, they say like the strong survive and this and that. I'm like, that's where we're, that's what we're doing. I, I think that, you know, we've, we've been here before, you know, during, during Absolutely. the last recession and, and all that kind of stuff and came out and all of us that stuck with it that I know and still have in my network have come out and been really successful in this world. And, and again, we're, you know, this is like, it's like forest fires, right? Like every so many years, every forest fire thins out the the foliage or whatever. So. Yeah, you know, I said that too in a in an episode last week. It's like if you can weather the storm right now, 
you could come out of this so super successful. And to your point, that's what we see. People that can weather these storms come out and their businesses explode. So we see the mat, the biggest massive growth with realtors and loan officers in their business. I mean, 50, 60, 80%, 100% growth year over year because they have these pipelines of people. It's not that like they stop prospecting. They don't stop talking to the yeah. consumer. It's just no one's doing anything. And then their businesses absolutely explode. And those are the good times. And that rides out for a year, year and a half, two years. It's, it's all cyclical. You have to take the good with the bad. And we're just in some turmoil, just from a pure transact, yeah. pure opportunity. The opportunity right now right. is just not as high as it has been over the last couple of years. Right. So, but I mean, it comes back. I mean, that's the thing. It's it's so yeah. hard when you're in the moment to realize like this, and this isn't even as bad as it's been. You right. know, there's just it's just more in your face because you you interact with more people. Unfortunately, it's it's rarely in person, but that's that's why it seems like it's worse than it is. So for all my all my loan officer people out there and realtors, you know, like look, we're at a, it's it's a slow slow time, but you know, it doesn't it doesn't have to mean that you're that you're losing that you're losing anything because this is a time you can grow your systems, grow your business, learn new things, talk to people like you. That's right. That's right. Well, listen, Steve, we appreciate it. Next week will be a big week. So uh, again, every Friday, we will bring the live audience, uh, the housing market update, and then the recording for all the YouTube viewers. This will get uploaded on Monday. So Steve, we appreciate you very much, my friend.